All right, welcome everyone. Uh, this is uh, Nathan Isaacson. I'm the developer of uh, our game, uh, which is called Yield. And uh, today I'm going to play a little bit against my uh, co-developer and artist uh, and little brother, actually, Osman. Uh, he, uh, I'm going to play multiplayer game against me. And uh, I think the background for the game is basically it's a 4x game, which is uh, yeah a bit similar to Civilization, but a lot simpler. And we're trying to make it simpler because we want to make it shorter, so it's possible to actually have fun playing multiplayer and not having to play only against the AI, which is the most common way to play Civilization, for instance. Um, this dream of making something like this started a long time ago, and uh, we also even made some uh, <laughs> pictures. Uh, a portrait of ourselves, which my brother, the artist, uh, created. It's only us two making the game in, in general. And uh, now I'm going to show you uh, a little bit what uh, what is all about. So we created a game in the game list here already. Um, and uh, the first thing you do is actually to choose something that we call tricks. And the tricks uh, are different perks. It's a bit hard to understand the first time you play, of course. That give you some special effect, which is unique for each game. So this time I'm going to choose the speed potion, I think. And maybe I'll do this one. The King's Rage means that your king has some extra power, but it will actually die after two turns. So uh, it's a pretty cool thing, but it's, uh, it's, it should be used with care, of course. So um, I'm ready to start the match. Um, so the game has uh, been quite inspired also by a game called Polytopia and uh, that's because they were able to make a lot of uh, you know heavy mechanics pretty simple um, and, 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 uh, and easier to understand. We tried to do that as well with our game so so instead of waiting a lot of turns to harvest and stuff like that we do more stuff instantly and as you can see down here there's only 16 turns in a whole game well in civilization it's 500 turns right so that's a pretty big difference. And the reason for that, obviously, again, is to be able to full uh, finish actually games in, uh, in uh, not half an hour, hour when you're playing multiplayer, half an hour when you're not playing multiplayer, and get that sim fix even without playing 10 hours straight. So um, yeah, I think this is a pretty good start. Uh, it's a lot of resources around me. And when I build my city, it's, uh, that's a pretty important factor to where to build. I think building around here should be pretty good, so uh, I think I'll go here actually uh, and, and build the city. Wow, I even explored this one, which is a good app that gives me more experience. I'll uh, maybe save that for later, I think, and explore a bit with my king. So I go down here, so I can actually grab this one next turn. and. Uh, to actually exploit these different resources, uh, I need to be able to have the right technology to do so. And, uh, and in this case, that face there <laughs> looks familiar, which is the wild boar. I'm going to buy that tech and, and start harvesting. And once I start harvesting, I can get uh, resources into my city. Uh, every time I harvest this wild boar, I get two population and two uh, workers, which is the most important to remember. And I can then go into my city and, and basically build some different buildings inside the city, which is a bit different from Polytopia, for instance, which you, where you don't really build buildings as such. So the city management is a bit more advanced here. Not like civilization completely, of course, but, uh, but uh, a bit more similar. So I'm going to build this building, which is called the Custom House, uh, because that gives me some money instantly, which is useful. And I'm going to build this tavern, which is uh, useful because it gives me more income. And getting more income early on can be helpful to beat my brother, which are a pretty good player. So that's the first turn. And uh, then we're going to discuss a bit more around this while we wait for my uh, brother to actually finish his turn on his side. So. I'm going to talk you through a little bit uh, what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to obviously have as many interesting decisions in each turn as possible because 
we have quite a few turns, uh, which means we want to have as much uh, stuff going on within each turn as, as possible, so it is more interesting to play. And I think in this game here, uh, there is quite a lot of gold, which is a very good resource for uh, generating income. So that will pretty fast be a priority to, for me to get hold of. But until I get that, I need to be able to grow my city uh, because the borders right now are pretty small. So you can only exploit whatever is inside your own borders. You can't really get hold of this gold until it's inside one of your city borders. So as you can see, this, this one here is almost full or half full, a bit more than half full, means that uh, when this gets to eight, I actually uh, grow into uh, uh, from a village to uh, to a city, and then my borders expand. And I can also grow even further, and, and it could expand even one more time. And then you get a lot of resources within the city borders, which is, uh, of course, uh, something that you're familiar with with people who place these kind of games, but. Uh, but in a bit different way. Also, as you saw when I was harvesting, oh, that's actually my brother, he's finished. <laughs> oh, he went for, okay, yeah. So he actually is really trying to win this game. Uh, anyways, that's <laughs> nice for him. This one is called a Scout, which you explore with. You explore pretty fast and it's a very cheap unit. Uh, the downside to it is that it uses one supply, which is not, infinite so you use one supply at least for each unit you build which could sometimes be quite annoying i think actually for my king i'm gonna get onto this uh onto this uh, mountain and and grab this experience uh, thing and gonna explain you more about that when it's not my turn so in order to actually get onto mountains you have to explore or have to develop the technology mountain climbing and there you go. I can't really take it the same round as I'm upon it, so I need to wait another round to actually grab it. Uh, also, one important thing is that there are different bonuses uh, in the game. One of the bonuses are a great explorer, and the great explorer is whoever, at, after nine turns, that has explored the most of the map will get this bonus, and these are pretty important. So getting to explore more of the map is important part of the game and I'll um, keep doing that. Okay, so uh, it's over to my brother again. And what I was uh, going to explain is a bit more about the experience system. So the experience system is basically each unit has different levels of experience and this unit has level zero, it has no stars, as you can see on the top of the unit here, right? If I click on the unit information, I can see which are, or what are the effects of actually getting more experience. So this are uh, the attack. So if I get one more experience, just by doing this, going under the mountain, I will have three in attack instead of two. Uh, and that makes quite a big difference actually, uh, because we try to keep the levels as low as possible. Having three in attack instead of two uh, makes it possible to kill some units and, and get more out of the unit. So getting that early is even more uh, valuable because then you can, uh, because then you can uh, exploit that when the other units aren't as strong uh, already. Right. So I think I'm gonna keep going over here, and there, there's a money one. That's that's always useful. And now I can claim this star, this experience star, and yes, my unit gets an extra experience. And not even only that, I can also move the unit afterwards, which is pretty pretty nice. So I'm gonna keep going into the mountains because when you are in the mountains, you explore a lot more, and that made me explore this one, and also. As you can see, I'm in the lead on the most explored, which is this uh, this icon here. And he has 53 hexes, I have 74. 
although he's actually starting, now I'm starting, so he has a one turn left uh, in addition to me. So, what can I do now? I don't have the technology to exploit these ones yet, so I'm going to exploit this one instead. And uh, I'm going to go into the city again and build myself another settler. And uh, with settlers you can uh, start and, uh, and create another cities, which is really useful, of course. Uh, and very important to expand your, uh, your empire. Okay, so it looks like uh, Osman is playing pretty well. I can also watch here while he's playing to see if some of his stats are, are going up or down. I can see here that he actually now used some of his money and he also got more points than them. He's got an elite because he got one crown. That's probably because to win this game, which is a pretty important fact, I guess should probably tell you about, is is based on the number of crowns that you that you capture or get, and whoever has the most crowns uh, crowns in the end will win the game, and this indicates what do you actually get crowns from. So 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 the population is one of them. So the, whoever has the most population at the end of the game will get one crown from that. So that's why he got one crown already. Of course. That doesn't mean you will win that crown in the end because I can get more population than him later on. Right now he's in the lead. Oh, it's my turn again. And the second one is the total kills. So that's the same as with population in many ways. So since no, no, no none of us has killed anyone, we basically no one else has that yet. Uh, but once one of us get the first kill, it will pop up here and be uh, worth a crown as well. And then there's a church, which is a building, almost like a, you know, a wonder in, in civilization, if you would like. Uh, and that one uh, is only one of those. So whoever builds that first gets gets that uh, crown. Is it very expensive? So it's not easy to get, but uh, but uh, that's also why it's worth a crown, obviously. If you capture someone else's cities, you will uh, also get a crown for each city you capture. So that's kind of a bit dynamic. If you capture three cities, okay. Then you get three crowns and then probably gonna win again, <laughs> even if the other guy gets most skills and population. A bit unlikely if you have them three of these cities, but anyways. And the last one is uh, the Roman ruins, which are actually on the map itself. So these are the Roman ruins. I can show you these ones. If you capture those, you will have to keep them and be the kind of owner of those at the end of the last turn then you get one crown for each of those as well. And if you scroll the map, actually you can scroll infinitely. So there's, there will always be two fronts. If I go left, for instance, like I do here, I will soon bump into them this way. If I go to the right, I will soon bump into them this way. So in, as such, it will always be two fronts. There's always a way, a back door to kind of get to the opponent, at least when you play two players. Uh, and you can also play team games, two versus two versus, etc. The north and south, though, are static, so you, you won't get, you won't get, you won't be able to kind of get to him by doing or going up. You can't get to the bottom by doing that. So that's not infinite in that sense. Right. So I think I'm gonna go to this one now. Ooh. Uh, and this looks pretty nice for uh, for another city, I think. So I'm going to go there. You can't build a city unless you're at least two hexes from the existing city. Uh, so I have to be two hexes from this one, essentially, right? And that can be here or it can be there. So the, the center is pretty fast, so it has a horse. You can move two steps uh, at any time, which is very useful in these cases. So uh, I think this looks... Pretty good. I'm gonna get hopefully a lot of income next turn, unless he's. This is a very weak unit, so he could actually take him out, especially this one because he's starting not far from here, I guess. Uh, but let's 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 see. Let's hope not. I, I hope you all cheer for me, of course, because I'm the presenter and not my little brother. That would be disappointing to lose to him again, but uh, we'll see. So while he's moving. I have explored now, as you can see, a few more different types of ruins. So this ruin are uh, basically money straight up, right? So you get money uh, to your total, 
which is uh, up in the right hand corner. And uh, I have now 10 gold, which isn't too bad, but next round I will get four more, twi uh, twi uh, two times. So I will get eight more. Not only that, because it's a new turn. Oh, there he is. Okay, luckily that wasn't a really tough unit, so he will not be able to take me out with that one. If it had been his king, for instance, I would have been in trouble, or if it would have been some kind of other unit, I would have been in trouble, but that wasn't the case. So I'm just gonna be happy and wait for it. The thing about these money, money ruins is that they actually increase for each round. So next round there will be five each. So I will get not only 10 gold as I have now, but I will get 10 gold in addition, which can make a pretty big difference early on, obviously. And will give me the ability to have some technology, I would guess, that would uh, expand my city and make it possible to start looking at these gold sources as a source for more income, which is, I guess, the single most important uh, factor in the economy uh, when it comes to this game. Uh, of course, there's more important things as well, exploration, and there's a kind of expansion, and there's obviously the tactical part around warfare, which will always be very important, but uh, income and economy is obviously not to forget. So, I can build a lot of places here, and uh, I think probably going here, or maybe even here, I think I'll go here actually, will be a good place for me. So, since I'm, uh, yeah, as we can see, these ones increase to five instead of four. I will explore those ones as well, and I get 10 extra. No, I put 20 gold. I could use that 20 gold to to do something that I've been waiting for for a long time, and that get the technology that, that can exploit this uh, these, uh, these resource. So, one thing to remember is that it's very important to not build your city before you actually do the technology, because every time you build a city, the technology gets more ex expensive. So that's, in a way, to stop uh, doing the wide tactic too much, at least, and not get only benefits from building new cities. You also have to think about the economy. It's not only positives. So I think I'm going to go for this one and also this one. I think I'm going to wait with this one. Right. Now I can build my city. I got the two, two technologies that I wanted. I think I'm going to jump into this so I get that one next round as well. And uh, this is a good question. I think for this one, I should go to the right there, actually. Uh, these ones are, of course, possible to capture all the game, but still, it's it's not too bad to get them quite early, because the other guy has to actually get there and use some time to capture them, and if there's a lot going on uh, elsewhere on the map, he might not actually prioritize that at the time, which means you might keep keep it, even though it was an easy grab. So, So I think I'm going to do that now. Right, so, for now, I think, having this one, I can get my money back on this one, so I'll just do that, and uh, I will uh, also, finally, expand this, this guy, so, that's not looking too bad, um, another thing is to actually be able to get more money and income into your city, it's important to, to build uh, what we call adjacency buildings. And since I did all of the gold uh, technology, it has a building which is called uh, uh, Stoneworks. But since I don't have enough money for that now, I have to wait with that for the next turn. So, but I can still build this one and get another tavern. And that tavern will give me more income as well, so it's not all bad. And I also got an extra income by growing the city. So it's starting to look pretty good, but uh, I will uh, not take anything for granted. My little brother is pretty good at this game, I'm sad to say. 
Okay, so now he's while well, he's moving. I think planning for the next turn is pretty important. And as I said earlier on, this game is meant to actually finish. Uh, if you play what we call the live version of the game, it will finish in one hour. So you only have 30 minutes each when it comes to the time that you got uh, for, uh, you know, in total. Right now, we are just playing a kind of a more of a free game, which is 24 hours for each turn. That's how we play if you don't sit down and play, you know, in uh, for for um, uh, and finish the game in one sitting. But more if you want to just do a turn now and then, and then uh, whenever it suits you. The reason why I chose this mode now is is because I'm going to explain a lot of the things to you as we go, and it doesn't makes that uh, doesn't make that much sense to to uh, to have this timing on because it's pretty short time, and I would be in uh, trouble pretty fast. So, so that's kind of uh, so the essence of the game already there, I think, for you to understand. It might seem, you know, in some ways a bit simple uh, if you compare it to civilization, uh, for instance. But tactically, I mean, when you play multiplayer, I don't feel it lacking in, 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 that, in that way, in that sense. I think tactically, uh, civilization isn't super deep anyways it's it's of course the empire building part of it and then the whole kind of epicness of it which is a lot deeper and there's a lot of more systems at play but but uh, with with yield we have we have tried to keep the most interesting systems uh, without losing kind of the tactical and uh, depth about the game so right yet another money uh, that's that's could be useful. I will grab this one next. The only thing about these ones are that the opponent, because as you can see, the fog of war is not around this one, so that means that the opponent can actually see that I'm there. And that gives away some information, which could be not ideal to give away sometimes, but I'll, uh, I'll do it for now, I think. Okay. So I got quite a lot of money. I uh, would like this one in not too far the distant future, but uh, because that gives me the goldsmith and I have a lot of gold. But for now, I think it's more important for me to actually uh, exploit this one. And I'll do it here. Stone works, and I get two extra gold around, which also is a pretty good one. And I think before this uh, opponent gets, you know, too far into my lands, it would be nice to have a bit more settlers, uh, and uh, therefore I'm gonna actually use some of my money to not only expand this city, which <laughs> I didn't even think about, which is a good thing, uh, and also get a settler uh, on top of it, which is uh, a good thing. So uh, then I can expand my empire even more. Of course, as I said, expanding too too quickly could make it a bit expensive in the end to do uh, different, uh, you know, different uh, technologies uh, because they add to the expense every time. So let's see what is what is my opponent actually doing. I think I can see a city here, right? So I can see the borders of probably his first city. Oh no! Okay, that's what I told you guys. So. Because he could see that, even though we hadn't explored this part of the map, he could see that I was there. And for him, pretty luckily for him, he had the, one of his uh, he had his king uh, unit nearby, and he basically just took me out. And the scout doesn't really it doesn't really take anything to take him out, which is the weakness of that unit. But uh, he's also. Uh, one of the good things about it uh, is that it's cheap, so you get a lot. In that sense. Right. Well, looks like meat is back on the menu because he did some of the same mis mistake with me now. He actually went to explore here and uh, he went straight next to my king, which means he's toast the next turn. And this king is. Yeah, it got a pretty good defense, so I, I'm not a very big problem for him yet, but it could 
could become a problem. So uh, we'll see. Right. I think my plan should be now to expand as quick as possible before he starts taking over this area here, which is still quite a far away from his city. And I'll go some uh, settler hunting, right? So I guess since he's exploring that way, he might also want to be interested to build in that direction, which means I um, should try to look out for some settlers and uh, hopefully take them out. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, I think also, oh, he's moving there. He took that one. I'm going to take that one from me, which is no surprise. Is it doing anything more around here? I hope not. We'll see. He's sitting in the same room, so he has a little advantage. He hears everything I'm saying, so uh, <laughs> he's laughing a little bit on the other hand. We'll see, see what happens. So, <laughs> so another thing that is quite useful is to look a bit more on uh, on the buildings that we can build. And one of the most important buildings early on, which I don't have yet, which I have to unlock by getting to the next level of the city, which are on the left hand side of the menu here or on the city screen. It says 18 and now I got 12 and that's population. If I get to 18, I unlock kind of the city view of things and uh, that means I can get uh, all these buildings which has a number three on them. And one of those buildings is called National Bank. Oh, it's my turn again. Uh, and that building is uh, very important because you get one gold for each population in your city. It costs 12 hammers, which are uh, pretty expensive. So I'm not sure if I can actually get it get it next turn, but maybe, maybe. Um, I think I'm gonna try it at least. And now, yeah, that's an easy kill. I could have killed him twice and uh, then not sure if I'm, I think I'm gonna go here. And there's the center I was talking about. Right, uh, yeah, okay. Then I'm not sure what to do actually, but uh, let's go here. Then I have at least some different possibilities in case he builds here or nearby my king or wherever he does. Uh, it could be an interesting, uh, interesting situation. Also by building next to my unit, he could actually lock it down a little bit because then uh, it's harder for me to move because it's a thing called solo control that makes it harder to move while you're around another opponent's unit. Right, so let's see if I can actually make the national bank or should I do that because yeah, I have a lot of more points because there's another pretty cool thing which is called the slow starter, which is on the bonus list. You get a bonus for actually being slow or the least good player. Uh, it was meant to be a kind of anti snowballing effect, but uh, I think my brother is uh, <laughs> on purpose playing a bit slow to get this slow starter and then use that as a snowballing effect afterwards. But of course, it makes makes him a bit slow in the start, which is something or choice that you have to make, depending a bit on whatever you got uh, in your city and uh, whatever you uh, get available of resources. But uh, resources are the one thing that gives you the most points in the beginning, at least. Right. So I think I'm gonna try to get this, this uh, national bank and uh, should probably have really been uh, doing the math up front <laughs> because I'm not sure if I can do it. Probably not actually. Hmm. Maybe if I get. Yeah, because there's uh, another bonus which is called the, the prospering bonus, which gives you actually. Uh, It gives you um, a bonus just for having 30 population. I got 26 now. I'm gonna win this. I'm not gonna win this slow starter anyway, so I just as well uh, get this other one. And I get that by, yeah, taking out all these. 
And then I can use something that is called a granary. In this granary, uh, you can build it whatever city you want. Uh, and I'm going to build it in my capital. And I get it into my capital. Then I get six plus population, six plus workers. Yay. And then, my friends, my city is big enough. So I can actually build this uh, national bank, right? And this is kind of, yeah, this is of course takes some time to get into and understand. And this is kind of, yeah, even if it's simpler in civilization, yeah, it's simpler than some other hardcore games. There are still quite a lot of nuances to it, which you have to take into consideration if you want to become a good player. It's a bit like chess, right? Everyone, a three-year-old could learn the rules, or four-year-old maybe. But that doesn't mean it's simple. Uh, and and yeah, if you're if you're playing against Carlson, you're not you're not going to win anyway, right? So, so this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it have enough interesting options to play in a different way every time and do different things and use kind of the map and use the possibilities that are presented in front of you in that specific game, right? So now I want to be able to. Uh, expand. I want to buy this one. Oh. Yeah, right. And I want to exploit this one. And then I want to build this one here, which gives me six more. And that means I have quite a good income after seven turns. And I'm gonna hopefully keep racking up more since I have quite a lot of sources of income around here. And I also get this one move here now. I will get even more. I lost the other scout, which was a pity, and uh, I should probably get some more scouts, or should I get something else? I think, yeah, no, I think for now, probably good enough. Yeah. Right, so that's, uh, that's it for me. Let's see what my brother picks up. He did earn, he does have a lot of money himself. I'm not sure if he earns that much money or if he just basically are saving up for uh, getting that slow starter bonus and then I'm gonna use that to actually, you know, build a lot of stuff at once. That could also be the case, actually. It wouldn't be the first time in history he did that. So um, let's see what, what he does. He did move his scout, of course. It will be interesting to see where he moves his king now, because uh, that could be uh, that could be a pretty important move. And uh, I will also have to consider what I should do based on what he's actually going to do with his center. So. He could build here next to me. He could build here. He could build here. Probably not here because he can't see that far, I guess. Um, he only sees what was around him. Maybe he hasn't even seen me. Yeah, he has because he had the skull here, right? Now, the skull was here, so he sees, yeah, he can see here, 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 and uh, probably down here somewhere. I'm not sure how, how these fields are. One reason why he's going around here is because he wants to be close to the objectives because these, remember, gives uh, gives one crown each and being you know that important for the outcome of the game it's also very important to build cities close to these objectives to be in order to try to you know attack them if someone else has grabbed them from you or try to uh, build units close to them so you can uh, recapture them if if the other guy has them and that's that's uh, so that's important, and that's also why I built Lichtfield pretty close to this one, right? So it should be not too hard for me to defend this one uh, in the long term, I think. But uh, And you can't really build here either, because that's too close to the borders of this city and this city. So so that makes a lot of sense for me to have this, this uh, here. Right, so he are uh, as I told you, he had a lot of gold. So it's and there he got even more gold. I can see. So he built a national uh, bank, the same as I did. You can look at national bank and those buildings a bit like uh, 
like um, you know these national buildings in civilization as well national wonders i think it's called uh, while as some of the buildings like these ones within the bonus hierarchy like for instance the church the great church is more like a, a, a great wonder in in civilization it doesn't take money or workers or turns to build them but it takes in this case a bonus uh, bonus points and those bonus points i already used one of them on this granary remember to get my national bank i could instead i went for you know hail the king or something like that and then i would have been closer to getting great church instead so this is kind of almost like a really small technology tree but instead of using money you use these stars and you get oh he's building there yeah of course he does so that's a pretty good placed well-placed city as well uh, he will not only will he kind of uh, you know challenge me on this one he will also challenge me on this one obviously which he is closer to even than i am and now he actually expands as well which makes it harder for me to build my second city uh, which I could have been building pretty close to this one um, so I'll see what I'll do now he's a bit annoying this guy and how much money has he got left not much so we'll see what he can cook up right and there he built a unit so even though my you can attack with three inside the city you get some extra defense oh there he's really aggressive on his uh, settling now so uh, he wants to secure this one and he even builds this one this is going to be hard luckily we won't probably finish the game before the streaming session is over <laughs> so we'll see what he can do now he will attack because that unit has quite not that much defense and uh, let's see what it does mm. oh, this wasn't super good for me of course and uh, i'll have to think a bit about what to do next so I'll go down here. It looks like it's a pretty good areas for income, and uh, he's earning 24, it seems. So that's the goal that he has now, at least. Doesn't mean he earns 24, of course, but somewhere around there. Uh, and uh, I think I just have to go here and build something there instead. I do have a little problem, and that's the fact that I'm. Uh, now, actually, doesn't he only have his king around there somewhere? He has this one, which is a ranged unit, and he has this one, which is also very close to this one. So trying to get this one now is a lot harder than it looked like just a few moments ago. But I'm going to make a try, and I'm going to do a move on this one, I think. Because what I can do now is there's a pretty cheap way to upgrade your king, which is called the royal banner which gives me one extra veterancy and, uh, and since my king has something called the armor i will get full health and i will get even more armor uh, if i do that so i can actually first attack this guy and even though my unit now is almost dead i can go here because you can move after you have actually uh, after you actually have uh, attacked someone, or you can always move afterwards with the horse space to this. So I'm gonna build the royal banner now. Yep. And there you see, I get another star, and then I got 25. It will still try to attack me, I guess, and hopefully it doesn't have two more units to chip in because he needs a bit more units to take him out. I'm though uh, gonna do something in return. I'm gonna now start getting more units because I need more units nearby. And uh, I think I'm gonna do more of these guys. 
they are pretty effective and uh, and especially it doesn't take that much supply either so it's a very effective early game right is there anything more i should do i should maybe think about getting more money is there any good ways to get money here that doesn't which gives me kind of it's not much synergy like i got this one this one takes two adjacent into one right so i get kind of a lot for just one building and uh, that's not the case with these other guys so uh, i think yeah. i'm gonna get some units first just to see how much money i got left before i start building and um, yeah. i should probably just build here then this one and, um, i should also not forget this guy ah i got eight more gold there just laying around that was a bonus indeed and uh, i think this one and this one so the reason why i build these guys next to each other is that it's something called market which i could actually Get even more money from if I if I get the technology. It's not like I'm anywhere close to getting market right now, but in the future, if I do, at least I have the possibility. Right. So I think that's it for me this round, and uh, we have now 20 minutes left. We will um, keep showing the game, of course. It's also important to, to know is that we have a competition, so. Uh, Whoever are able to win the campaign, the single player campaign, actually, the this week it's lasting until next Wednesday, twelve in the night, Central European time. Whoever wins and gets second or third on that campaign, if you try the game and the demo, um, will get a free copy of the game as well. So I hope some of the viewers uh, that are listening in will actually do that. Right. So instead of attacking me, he kind of went down here instead, and uh, that is uh, probably because he wants to take this uh, ruin and get hold of that. That means that he probably won't be looking to take out my king. I guess he's still gonna just annoy me, but uh, but uh, we'll see. I don't think he has enough units yet to do anything more, but that will soon change, and uh, but we'll see. You also have to be a bit careful, of course, because this unit is pretty strong, and he hasn't really hurt it that much, so he still has a lot of its strength left, which means it could be dangerous uh, for him. Instead, he's expanding his cities and doing all kinds of things now. And he also has explored uh, almost more than me, so uh, we'll see how I manage, if I manage to even get that great explorer, I'm not sure, probably not. But hopefully there are some things that I can do next round to surprise him a little bit at least, and uh, let's see what happens. So at least I stopped his growth around here, he can't really grow this city anymore because there's nowhere left to grow and it's not that many resources in it. So this is not the best city. And having all these cities uh, around which isn't super good could also be a problem, as I've said before, uh, in the end, because, because if I capture the cities, I will also get some extra crowns. And, um, and it's all about the crowns in the end. Yeah, it doesn't have any money left much, so it'll probably be my turn in not too long. And then, of course, he built the city there as well. And I'm not sure if he's able to expand it on top of that. Probably, if I know him right. It will be harder for me to build over here, of course. So that's probably what he tried to stop me from doing. 
Um, I'm gonna try to explore it more over here. Um, I'm gonna go over here and, uh, and try to build down here instead. So I can actually get the bonus of these two into one adjacency building. That could be useful. Right, so what can we do here? That's more important, I guess. And um, it would be nice to have roads, I guess, now. Um, hmm. Yeah, what to do what to do. I think the easy solution would be to just take him out there. But of course, if I've got this one down there, uh, he could take him out as well. And he's uh, then he gets yet another uh, um, armor, which gives him even more life and even more armor, which is really useful. And he can also get more defense, so it's a lot stronger defensively because now he's very weak defensively. I, I should claim. I did claim this rune anyway, so I get one more crown, so now it's actually even score. Um, right. So I'm gonna also have a bit more units, I think. I think I need roads down the road, <laughs> to say it that way. Anyways. Uh, so let's see, I think also having the farming technology, the road, and uh, then I can actually build a road, then you, it just cost half the moment across this tile, right? So then I can actually get all the way down here, and uh, I can't take him out, but uh, this one does. Uh, Okay, right. So I didn't. That was a very bad move by me, I'm afraid. We'll see what happens now. But uh, because this actually took him out, I couldn't. I was hoping he was just going to hurt him so I could take him out. But uh, then I'm a bit in a bit more trouble than I thought. Anyways, it will soon be over. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I think that's it for me. And let's see what he does. It's also pretty important to not let your cities, you know, be left open because there are some tricks, like the trick that I've got, where you have this speed potion that could uh, really, you know, could really uh, get you far away from where we are at one turn. Which means that you, if, if your city is open and the other guy sees it, you can actually get into your city, especially these ones that are close to the border. So this one I feel is a lot safer, but uh, of course, and I know that this king is pretty close to here. Right, so there he went in for that one. And um, probably, I think he's gonna move again because he didn't like the sight of this. Axeman, he didn't expect that, I guess. So we'll see what happens next. Right, so he went into that city with this one instead. And uh, yeah, I think I should be able to take him out. But uh, the battle for the objectives are most definitely on and that's also something that we want to achieve is to kind of have as much uh, as much action as possible also without taking away too much of the kind of the city building and, and the city expansion uh, part of the game but we want to be able to He's going to explore more as well, so I'm really in trouble there. But it is not to win, this is to actually show you how the game works. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's see what he does. Oh, okay, he comes around with his silly uh, footman. That doesn't scare me. And he's earning quite a lot of money, isn't he, as well? Yeah. 
Okay, but there are some bonuses that I probably will get, and uh, those are called the um, the small kingdom. If you can see that, yeah, small kingdom, which is whoever has the least cities and population after eleven rounds. And since he's building so many cities now, he will uh, have a hard time getting that at least. So we'll see. We'll see. Ooh. That isn't good news. So that, this is called General Shams, and he's a very strong unit. He has a lot of uh, powers, and he can give these powers, as you can see. Uh, he can give those powers uh, to the unit next to him. So he has these adjacency bonuses. And uh, these adjacency bonuses uh, gives every unit around him one extra defense and one extra uh, that means that uh, in the next couple of turns, I will have quite a lot of firepower pretty close to myself, which uh, is never good. Um, he's also trying to expand even more. I don't know exactly to where, but uh, we'll see. And I'm a bit you know, pressed into this area here, that should probably be a bit more aggressive when it comes to building more uh, uh, cities quicker, but that's how it is, you know, have to do different projections, so, hmm, yeah. How much of that one do I actually take out? Mm -hmm. All right, and how much do I lose? Five. Okay, I will try to get down here. And, uh, I think I should probably just save this in one for later. Try to see if I can make some more damage with this guy. Then I can go over this fellow and finally get my star. And this this guy is now a lot stronger. He got three stars, so he's actually done fully uh, fully ranked up uh, and can't get much stronger than this, I'm afraid. But uh, that's still very very strong unit. Uh, uh, I think this guy. I'm gonna. Build over here. And, uh, yeah. Try to take him out when that time comes. Um, for now, I think I, I'm, I still have quite a lot of units, but he has a lot of special units. So we have not only has he got. This one, he has uh, his king, of course, and then he has this uh, Don, which is a horse archer, very effective in many ways, and hard to and hard to kind of stop. So it's not looking great, uh, but I think I should just keep building good units in my city. So now I have this swordsman as well, and that is. Uh, it's not po more powerful, but it has a lot better defense, which makes it a bit safer to be me at the moment. But I'm still in trouble. Uh, I think I need more units, and I think I need them pretty fast. I should build more units in my capitals where I'm trying to get to help my fellow uh, my fellow uh, compatriots. Um, and uh, yeah. Should probably have done something here as well with these things, but I forgot it. Yeah, let's do that next turn. And next turn it is uh, maybe this one. Okay, to do a bit more income, or should I just? Yeah, we'll see. I don't have enough money right now. And this guy, I shouldn't forget. He's exploring still and uh, trying to understand a bit more about, you know, the enemy and what he's up to uh, a bit further behind uh, his front, which is pretty, 
easy for me right now to understand what he's doing. So, of course, he wants to get hold of this objective, which I've taken. I'm not sure. He's also, of course, going to take out my units. He wants to get more experience to his units, which are the most powerful ones. So he's going to use probably this unit, this, uh, this uh, super unit, which are part of this bonus tree. So he has basically used one bonus star to get this one and then two bonus stars to get this one. And it, as it says, it's taken by Sir Edmund. So some of, them, some of those bonuses uh, are not possible to get more than once in the game. So he's already got that one. I can never get that one in this game. Uh, the same goes for this great artworks, the same goes for the great church, the same goes for the great bank, bank and, and the great library. So these are buildings that are uh, only available for whoever gets it first. And now it's deep into my lands, which of course is never, never good. Has to make some decisions on where to go, I guess. Yeah. He took out that one. And this king is taking out that one, yeah. So he's getting close. This is, this is not good, I guess. So, some problems with the camera, I think. But uh, there it's back again. Hope it's working now. Um, yeah, so... As you can see on the map, he's uh, getting really strong now, and uh, it's hard for me also to kind of get to his units and doing some impact on them, which which is annoying because they can just go back and forth, back and forth, and uh, and and you know once he has done his attack, he can just withdraw again, and it's hard for me to actually get to the units that really matters because these. These warriors aren't really worth that much and it costs so little for him to build new ones. He won't really affect his army that much if I take him out, even if, if I can, of course, this, this won't really help me that much. And uh, I'm not really sure what to do about it here because it's not easy to, to stop this guy now, I'm afraid. Right. Ooh, a catapult as well. It means business. And it's trading. So this is a trading unit, uh, as you can see. This guy is uh, moving into this other city here. And he has already, as you can see, it's worth three, three money. And, uh, and it's, uh, if it gets into the city, it's going to be two more hexes. So you get one, one, you get one gold for each hex you are away from uh, from the city that built the trading unit to begin with now it's trying to explore what's over inside my my capital it seems and he's getting some units from here and uh, yeah he's not looking very good it's not looking very good but i will take out some units here obviously and um See if I can hurt him a little bit at least. If this king of his actually gets ranked up as well, he will have a uh, special effect of that king, and uh, and the special effect of that king is is uh, something called uh, air a heal. That means that it heals another unit five five health every turn it stands next to him at the end of the turn which is very useful, of course, when it comes to battle, especially when you go back and forth like this and your units get a bit hurt, but not super hurt, and then you can heal them back again and then go back with full health without really losing much. 
Right, so uh, what should I do here? This one takes up nine there, nine there. Yeah, it's a bit tempting, of course, to take out this guy and then he's uh, ranked up as well and get a bit more help, which could be useful. And, uh, the passage for him is a bit freer, but still, uh, this one is is not. So I think I'm gonna just move away. Let him take out this guy, and uh, I'm gonna build another unit inside here. And now I think I need something a bit extra in this city to defend myself properly. That's probably why I brought this catapult, because he wants to be able to take out the horror the, the take out the swordsman because they are pretty hard to take out once you got the city well defended. Right. The cool thing about swordsmen is that they can actually move after they have so uh, I can try to get him at least a little bit away here. <laughs> And also, I think I'm gonna move up here with this guy to support these guys. And I should now remember to build this building down here and get my money back, which is a good thing. Um, I want to do some hunting and I want to hunt down this. But at least I get. I have the most kills at the moment, actually, uh, and he has the most population. So that that means that I've got. That's why I'm leading here. Of course, now I gave up this a little bit because I went, uh, and he's getting this one back. So it still looks pretty bad in that sense. Uh, I can now build another of these guys just to get myself a bit more firepower and. Uh, I think probably another of these ones. But I think it's not enough. We'll see if we get any help. And it also seems like now that our hour of streaming is getting to an end. So um, so we will hopefully never see how this ends either. But it's it's only five turns left, right? So so this is got yeah, we have this build-up phase, and then we kind of have this uh, early, early kind of uh, phase where you start having some small attacks and stuff. But but uh, now we're in in kind of the end game phase, and then you have a lot of heavy units hitting out at each other and uh, making uh, making life hard for each other and. Uh, and that's how it has to be if you have to be have 16 turns only. The cool thing is that we've been playing now uh, a little bit less than an hour. And as you can see, there's not that much left. It's only five turns. And I would, would have been able to finish the game uh, in maybe 20 more minutes. So that means if you have uh, just a evening and want to play with some friends, uh, you can just, you know, uh, take out this game and play along a little bit and, and actually be able to finish it. So that's that's a good thing. And you also can play two versus two games, which is pretty cool. And you can play uh, uh, three versus three or four versus four even. And because you can move simultaneously with your teammates, that won't take much more time than the one versus one game actually. It will take the same amount of time. Um, so you can play these team games pretty effectively. Oh, this doesn't look good, so he's going to take my city, it looks like. And I think that will probably be the last thing that you see from uh, our streaming today. You won't be able to see where his catapult ends up. Looks a bit undefended, but I guess he's going to move back with some of his uh, other units and uh, defend it properly. So, probably would have lost this one. 
to be honest. Uh, and um, I think this combination of these units that he was able to assemble, especially the the you know general stamps, which is really really hard to stop, is is important to get early on uh, if. If, if kind of the warfare part of things is the most important in the game. And this was a really war heavy game because we met pretty early and and um, basically started fighting straight away. So I should probably never let them get that uh, slow starter because once he got that, he really built upon that and, and expanded quite quickly. Right. So. Uh, any last questions before we stop the stream or uh, are you guys uh, happy with what you've seen? It's uh, totally understandable. <laughs> okay, that's good. So uh, thank you and, uh, and uh, thanks for watching. See you guys around hopefully on our Discord or uh, in the future.